All right, let's go over cardiovascular health. So we just finished the weight management chapter. Let me draw the heart real quick. This will be a rough drawing of the heart. Here's the inferior, superior, vena cava. There's the aorta. Just for visual reference. Anyway, you get the idea. So here's the coronary arteries that feed the heart with oxygen rich blood. What I want to focus on here are these coronary arteries. So let me draw this. So what I'm doing is I'm just blowing up this little area so you can see what I want to talk about here. So you've got LDL, you've got HDL, LDL is a bad cholesterol, HDL is a good cholesterol. Let me talk about how these influence cardiovascular health. So here's our LDL and it's depositing. There's so much of it. Our LDL is high. There's so much of it the HDL can't take enough of it away and it makes these little deposits and if they stay there too long they start to form plaques. And so I'm oversimplifying this but here's these plaques that have formed and so it has narrowed this artery. So if a clot comes through here, so let's say the clot's going through with the blood flow, it can stop or interrupt blood flow to the heart, to the heart muscle, to the cardiac muscle. And if that happens, it can die. It's different than skeletal muscle. It can't go as long without oxygen. And once it's damaged, it won't repair itself. So I'm going to take the same artery. And let's say we've got the LDL being deposited, but we have the HDL, the good cholesterol, it comes and picks all this up and takes it with it. So after it's gone, you have this nice clean artery. So that's the reason we want high HDL is because it essentially serves as a vacuum cleaner for those arteries. So HDL, in a normal person you want it above 40. LDL, you want it below 100. And really you need to look at your cholesterol ratio because this number could be really high and this one could be in the 100s but if you have really high HDL, it's a vacuum cleaner, it could compensate for the increase in LDL. So it's really we want high HDL. Our total cholesterol could be really high as long as the reason it's high is coming from the HDL. And let me explain what I'm talking about. We want a cholesterol ratio. So our total cholesterol in the case that I just mentioned would be 140. That's adding the LDL and the HDL. You almost you may also see V LDL. Um, but anyway, you add up your total cholesterol. So let's just deal with the HDL LDL for right now. And we're going to divide it by our HDL. So we're taking our total, here's our total, versus the HDL number. So there's total over the HDL. And that's going to give us a cholesterol ratio of 3.5. That's considered optimal. You want your cholesterol ratio to be right around 3.5. That's considered optimal. You do not want it over 5. So anything below 5 um, is okay. Um, anything over 5 it, that's getting, you're running the risk of these, this LDL forming these plaques in your arteries because there's too much of it. You also need to look at what's called CRP, creatine reactive protein, CRP. This I don't believe is mentioned in your book, but I'm going to talk about it. And you want your CRP levels to be below two. So any you want them to be below two. So anything above two can cause inflammation in the body. So let's draw out that same artery. And let's say it does have a plaque in it. So that we've had that LDL wasn't cleaned up, but right now the plaque is small enough where it's not causing a problem. So 
We've got the plaque there, not causing a problem. But if we eat certain foods, and these foods differ for everybody, so that's the reason you need to get your CRP levels measured when you get your blood work done, it can cause this area, this artery to swell. And when it swells, causes that to close the artery off because that's where that plaque was. And now the blood flow has been interrupted which could cause a heart attack just like a clot going through which a clot going through is considered an ischemic attack. So this is an ischemic attack right here. And the one with the CRP levels going up, this is more of inflammation. You've eaten something that causes inflammation throughout the body, even in the arteries, and it causes that to close off, and then you have a heart attack. An ischemic attack can also happen to your brain. So not just a heart attack. So let me draw this out real quick. So here's our guy, our lady. There's their neck and shoulders. I know I'm not the best artist in the world. Here's our brain up here. We draw our, our brain, the brain stem, spinal column, all that good stuff. And then we have these coronary or uh, carotid arteries, the main arteries feeding the brain, and those branch out, of course, inside the brain. There's our carotid artery taking blood, oxygenated blood, to the brain, and the jugular vein takes it away, takes deoxygenated blood away. So that same ischemic attack can happen in the brain. So here's that artery. I'm just blowing up a cross section of it. Okay. And we've had these little deposits. We've had these plaques form over time. And we have a clot come through and close this off. And then the area of the brain will die. And it happens even faster in the brain. You have about four to six minutes without oxygen to an area of the brain, brain death will occur. And it will not regenerate. So that could either cause a person to die or to suffer brain damage as a result. And those CRP levels that I talked about before, let's say I have a big plaque form here. CRP levels get high, I eat some sort of food that causes my CRP levels to get high, and this part swells up, the artery swells up again. Again, it causes that to close off, and then all the blood flow can't get to the brain, and the same thing can occur. You can have different types of ischemic attacks. You can have an ischemic stroke, which 80-85% of strokes are because of a clot coming through. And you also have what's called a TIA. TIA. Transit ischemic attack. They call these mini strokes. A clot comes through, closes this area off, and then it moves along its way after that. But it doesn't stay there. It's not stuck there. It doesn't have to be busted up with clot busting drugs, so it doesn't cause permanent damage. It's there less than four to six minutes. It's there just long enough for the person to show signs of having a stroke, but not long enough in most cases to cause permanent damage transit ischemic attack so if you ever hear of somebody having a mini stroke that's what they're talking about a little clot coming through stopping blood flow for a short period of time and then moving on so and that's the reason uh, the person doesn't suffer long lasting effects so I hope this was helpful I hope it explains why it's important to manage your weight especially if you have a family history of having high cholesterol and the risks associated with that.